Welcome back. We turn back to Oahu's continued water crisis. Yeah, there was a really heated uh, hearing earlier today with naval officials being grilled by lawmakers and the Board of Water Supply. And uh, joining us live to continue the conversation, we have Ernie Lau with the Honolulu Board of Water Supply. Ernie, thank you so much for being here. I know this was uh, a busy day for you, but first I want to jump to that that hearing that we just we just saw with those naval officials. I mean, you really didn't mince words with them. You, you, you said, you know, you want them to follow that order to either fix the problem or face a shutdown. Were you confident in, in what they told you? You know, unfortunately, I just to be honest, I, I, I was not very, very confident. It, uh, I didn't like what I heard. Uh, I didn't hear a commitment to empty those tanks as soon as possible. Uh, I didn't necessarily hear a commitment that they are going to follow the health director's emergency order. And that's what I was looking for. And talk about why it's so critical that the Navy uh, does follow through with this, as well as it is transparent and communicates with the Board of Water Supply. Yeah, it's really important because, you know, again, I go back to we all depend on this uh, groundwater aqua for our water resources in that area. And if it's contaminated with fuel and the numbers that came out and were, were released today by the Department of Health of what they found in Red Hill Shaft, the Navy's drinking water source, they're alarming numbers. They're so high, I had to kind of pinch myself to think, was this real? That the concentrations of diesel and gasoline in that uh, their own water source, source was so, were so high uh, and uh, you know, that's a representation of what could be in the aquifer and could be flowing underground. Uh, and we don't know which direction it might be flowing. And that's why we've secured uh, stop pumping halaba shaft. And, you know, for the at least that was the first time I heard them actually use the, the word uh, jet fuel, but then they still wouldn't go as far as to say that the, the tanks were the source of this. And you mentioned the aquifer. Um, there have already been, you know, two different wells now that were contaminated. You know, what do you say to what do you say to people that are, are questioning this? And, you know, if we all pull from the same aquifer, uh, is there concern that the aquifer is contaminated, too? Uh, uh, I do have concerns uh, about that especially if the test results on the uh, a, the Navy's IA Halava shaft comes back positive, uh, confirmed positive for diesel in it, uh, then that's to me an indication that the fuel could have flowed across the valley. And that's a, to me, that's an alarm bell. You know, it's like the fire alarm bell going off in your room. It's splitting your ears, but if you're still staying in the room and not doing something about that, you know, something is wrong here. So I, I would ask the Navy to really just realize that you can't keep this World War II facility running uh, without endangering our water resources. And has there been any talks of maybe getting emergency authorization to detect just how widespread this fuel contamination could possibly be and to speed up that process? You know, there is uh, some uh, work that the Navy has done uh, and that's something that you know we're going to be briefing the board of water supply on on Monday at our water board meeting. Uh, but I, I think the uh, what the Navy's uh, initial modeling and uh, findings are is that if Halava shaft kept on pumping and the Navy's Red Hill shaft stopped pumping, uh, fuel could flow quite a distance toward the west, eventually ending up in Pearl in Pearl Harbor. Uh, and potentially impacting our, our IEA and Halava well, which we have turned off uh, upon notice of that other uh, uh, detection in that other Navy well. Uh, so these are questions I think the Navy should just come forward and share this information. Uh, they mentioned about doing investigations into the leak uh, there at Red Hill uh, and how that fuel got into the system and they referenced the November 20th leak. Uh, you know, really, that information, the part of their investigative report, I believe that should be made completely public, fully unredacted, so everybody can understand what's happening with that facility. Uh, that's that's what I request from the Navy. And, and I, right now, I know that the Board of Water Supply is urging people to use their water wisely, uh, conservative possible, and it's voluntary right now, but... I mean, how could, soon could that become mandatory? And really, what do people need to know about that? You know, the real test will come uh, next summer when it's hot and dry. And that's when we normally see water demand getting to the, the highest levels during the year. 
And that'll be the test of whether or not our other wells can meet the demand at the time. If it can't, then we are going to step up our requests for conservation. If necessary, where demand for water might exceed supply available from our wells, we may have to implement mandatory uh, restrictions on water usage. I hope I don't have to go there. I, I'm really hopeful that our community will step forward, will cocoa and that we'll all work together uh, to live within the available water that we have for our community and that we won't have to go as far as mandatory restrictions. And, and right now, what strain is there on, on the other remaining wells right now? And, and also just how widespread could this be if it, if, if it does test positive that there were contamination in the aquifer itself, you know, what happens then? Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the system or the people that are impacted from the city of Honolulu, it goes from like Halaba Valley all the way out to Hawaii Kai, and that's over 400,000 people. Uh, we've also shut, uh, as of yesterday, an additional two wells, uh, IA and ha uh, Halaba well, and that impacts about 20,000 more uh, of our customers uh, that live in the community of IA and Halaba from uh, Halawa Eva Inna Street all the way out to Hikaha Street on the west. So when when that hap uh, when that happens and when you do have to shut down certain wells, does it put a strain on the remaining wells or, or ha what happens there? Uh, yes, the remaining wells have to pump harder, pump longer uh, to meet the demand for water. Uh, and uh, for the Aia Halawa system, when we turned off those two well uh, well stations, uh, we lost about 50% of our source capacity. Uh, so there's even a larger impact on a smaller water system. And for Halava shaft feeding into Honolulu, that's a 20% of our source capacity there uh, that we had to just basically turn off the switch, turn off the pumps, and not allow any more water to come into the system from Halava shaft and those other two wells. And what does drinking water look like right now? Can you give us an update from the Board of Water Supply? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? What exactly does drinking water look like right now? Are you testing and sampling it from the Board of Water Supply's standpoint? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, we are testing and sampling on a weekly basis. The five nearest wells that are closest on either side of the Red Hill fuel tank facility, uh, we are testing weekly. Um, and actually, we've started testing eight years ago, almost eight years ago in 2014, after the 27,000 gallon leak from tank number five. And, and just uh, real quick, I, you know, I just want to make clear, I know you brought this up at, at the hearing and, and you know, there's debate over whether the Navy is going to follow the order, but just to be clear, in, in, in your estimation, how does this end? Do you think the tanks need to be removed? Uh, bottom line, the tanks need to uh, be emptied out and uh, they should look at uh, relocating the fuel storage at a location not over the drinking water aquifer. I think the record and the more recent experiences, I mean, they're right in front of us. If we don't do something uh, now, you know, we are gonna be facing a greater environmental disaster and, and the impact on our water systems. You know, we're, Port of Water Supply, our, our test results come back, no fuel detected, and our water is safe for our BWS customers. Uh, unfortunately, the customers served off the Navy systems, they are struggling with that because their water, they can't drink it, uh, they can't use it for uh, personal hygiene or other, uh, like washing their clothes or taking a shower. Yeah, it's just uh, such a difficult situation out there. I know you're uh, working to stay on top of it. Uh, Ernie, we appreciate you joining us uh, this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate Everybody it. Be